I think the performance of the countries with fossil fuels must be judged by how they address the issue of environmental protection, how they uh, address the issue of green transition. Azerbaijan, a land where Eastern Europe meets Western Asia. It's home to over 10 million people, with half of them being based in bustling Baku, set on the Caspian Sea. The country is rich in oil and natural gas resources and has hosted the 10th Southern Gas Corridor and 2nd Green Energy Advisory Council ministerial meetings. High on the agenda was discussion about the expansion of the corridor, a crucial route of gas supply diversification for the EU and its neighbouring countries. So we started to build this partnership between countries, between companies, inviting uh, leading international financial institutions to support us with their financing. And um, 3,500 kilometers long pipeline is now a reality. Azerbaijan last year increased their gas exports by 9%, up to 22 billion cubic meters. Currently, their main buyers in Europe include Italy, Greece, Romania, Hungary and Bulgaria. There are many uh, new uh, partner countries who are willing to receive uh, even additional volumes of natural gas, despite the fact that we are transitioning away from fossil fuels, but uh, this takes some decades. Uh, now we want to well establish also the future-proof cooperation. And that collaboration, as well as transition to green and renewable energy, was also discussed as President Aliyev called for a change in the narrative when judging countries with fossil fuel. We do it not because we lack traditional resources, but because we want to contribute using the financing, using the revenues which we get from oil and gas sales to invest in renewables and to create a, a common understanding about the need for that. It's a sentiment that has EU backing. A couple of years ago, the European Union launched a global methane pledge and this is exactly uh, to cut methane emissions, which is second most uh, potent greenhouse gas from the oil and gas industry. And uh, Azerbaijan joined this pledge last COP. So um, this shows that, that they are behaving responsibly. And on top of that, uh, with all these offshore development plans, they can replace domestic electricity production. And the use of wind farms in the Caspian Sea looks set to play a pivotal role in the green transition. Energy is a cross-border thing. Take Azerbaijan. They want to build lots of offshore wind farms in the Caspian Sea. They won't consume that energy themselves. They'll send it through a new power cable that will be built across the Caucasus, under the Black Sea, into Europe. This is international cooperation. You can only do things like this when the governments come together and they come together with the industry who's going to build it. SOCAR, the state oil company of the Republic of Azerbaijan, is already implementing strategies to accelerate lower carbon solutions and decarbonisation technologies. We all understand that um, oil and gas uh, industry will continue to provide a very vital, sustainable and reliable, in a sustainable way, reliable energy and help us to basically transition to clean sources of energy. You know that carbon border adjustment mechanism starts to penalize the exporters uh, or importers into EU starting from 2026, fertilizers are there. So we'd like to explore the opportunities of uh, decarbonizing our production of fertilizers as well. President Aliyev was also passionate about the wider effects of climate change as the country prepares to host this year's uh, COP29. We see the implication and dangerous implication of the climate change, less water in our rivers, less snow in our mountains, less water in the Caspian Sea. And if we don't address this issue uh, with passion and with the commitment, then all of us will suffer. So renewable uh, projects agenda of Azerbaijan is very ambitious. An ambitious plan indeed for Azerbaijan and the wider global energy industry.